to Under the Radar Report. I'm here with Peter Chilton, our mining analyst, and we're here to discuss rare earths, which are unambiguously hot right now. So let's get into it. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Well, let's just start off by just defining what rare earths are. Well, there's about actually 17 different rare earths, and they're rare or called rare earths because um, they're not often found, but actually they're quite widespread. But you can only mine them where you've got good concentrations of, um, of material. And what makes them special? What makes them special is that they can combine with other metals or other non-metallic compounds to, to make these amazing chemicals, which has got all sorts of applications. It's very specialist. The most important, the most high value applications of rare earths are for use in magnets, permanent magnets. And of course, they're coming to their own at the moment because of the demand for uh, EVs, which enables them to produce these lighter engines, and also for wind turbines, where you know they need to be efficient and again, very sturdy and um, and very good against the weather. Yeah, so I guess it's not all the different types of rare earths that come to producing this um, particular trait. It's a, a certain types or a certain type. Well, there's, two, there's two in particular, well, four, but two main right. magnet rare earths and then two smaller ones. Uh, that's out of the 15 or 15, 17 rare earths. Yeah. And where are most of these rare earths produced? Like where, where does the bulk of production well, come from? The bulk of production, say roughly 70% are mined in China, mined in China, but actually in terms of processing, you're talking about 95% or thereabouts processed in China. So China is really the epicenter of rare earths. And Linus, who, who people would know, is, is another producer. So what percentage would they be producing well, in the on Linus the probably about six percent of say the mined rare earths. So it's quite a small proportion globally mm. and even less than that in terms of the process. Yep. But I suppose the, the importance of Linus is it's really the only significant producer outside China yep. of the processed rare earths. So so um, Linus is really quite in demand for those that want to diversify, diversify away from China. You know, with this demand, what's interesting, you know, that we're talking about, uh, you know, this insatiable demand for EVs, why has the price come off for, for rare earths? Or is that all rare earths or just some it, rare it's, earths? It's really just a short-term thing. Uh, I think at the time, I think China was sort of demanding more rare earths and then because of combination of COVID and their own uh, market downturn, uh, the, the demand came off. So you had these prices coming, which came off. Uh, and that in turn, of course, led to Linus's own share price quite coming off. But Linus's share price was um, came off even more so, didn't it, because of... Um, well, there were several specific yeah. factors. Yeah. One factor was um, Mr. Musk uh, with, in te from Tesla talking about the fact that he was finding a way to actually avoid using rare earths in his motors. So, you know, whether he achieves that and whether other organisations would, would not adopt that, it just depends on the technology. But that certainly cast a bit of a warning regarding rare earths. Bit of a shot over the bow. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but not confirmed yet. Yeah. And the second thing for Linus specifically, they, they built this plant in Malaysia uh, for processing of what they mined in Western Australia. And then it transpired that the Malaysians decided that because the, um, uh, this plant in, China, in, in Malaysia produces some byproducts which are radioactive, um, they were going to stop processing in, in Malaysia, which obviously was a huge issue for, for Linus. Uh, Linus has got over that problem, or was getting over that problem by building a, a plant in West Australia which will process the material up to the stage where the radioactivity can be, which can, radioactivity um, active materials can be taken out mm. and then the, what remains in the Malaysian plant um, is you know, completely free of any radioactivity. So that would continue. And has Linus's share price been bouncing because of the resolution of that uncertainty? I think it, it is uh, and also Linus in itself is expanding its production over the next sort of two years and also because of the um, Inflation um, Reduction Act in the, in the States, uh, it's got funding for it to build two plants in the US as well, which is diversifying its own 
downstream production. So and a lot so, of this yeah, stuff is growing. And so it comes back to China, doesn't it, in terms of countries, in particular the US, trying to increase their sovereign or reduce their sovereign risk. Absolutely, because China's been threatening to um, cease export of some of the uh, technology, yeah. rather than technology, particularly that related to magnets. Um, so clearly it suits the US and the whole world really to diversify away from China. Um, so there's no risk of not having access to that technology. And speaking of diversif diversification, should investors um, have an exposure to rare earths in their portfolio, do you think? Well, it's pretty early stage. I think probably an exposure to liners might be something that, that um, will be worth looking at. Other than that, there's a lot of small potential producers um, in Australia, which are very sort of embryonic at this it's stage. Analogous to a gold rush, isn't it, with it, all this yeah, money coming into it's probably the, the largest one is Arofura. Yeah. Uh, but even that is only sort of 750 market cap. I mean, 750? Yeah, 750, yeah. Well, it's not small. It's not small. But it's not a producer yet. Yeah, it's not a producer yet. There are a number of other Arafuras, but they're at a much earlier stage. They're much smaller market cap. Right. Um, but obviously, I think that sector is going to grow over the next few years. So it's worth keeping an eye on the, on the ones that are going to succeed. And so, it, in summary, this is an exciting space that, that I guess is exacerbated by that, that geopolitical risk. It is, and, yeah. and companies are racing in to try and exploit yeah. that. that. Well, it's all part of the energy transition, you know, whether well, you're looking at cobalt, is. a copper, lithium, rare earths comes in on that as well. Well, thank you, Peter. It's been thank wonderful. You. Yeah, thank you. It's been wonderful learning um, or gaining your insights into this really emerging and important field of rare earths that we're only going to hear more of. Speaking of which, we've got a report out um, this week on 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 yes, yes. and on you know the biggest producer listed producer Linus. Yes. And then looking ahead, you're going to do another. You're yeah, doing another report. Yeah, we're going to look at other companies in the sector. Well, another exciting space for um, for under the radar to rake over and for Peter to do some really good analysis. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we'll look forward to you know talking to you next time. Thank you. Yeah.